six, a helping hand with your land. Hi, Tom from Messick Farm Equipment. I'm the Precision Farming Specialist for our dealership. Today we're working on installing an Easy Guide 250 guidance system. Uh, the tractor we're using is a T4 110, a uh, good medium sized tractor for this type of application. Um, so, first off, we're going to go over some of the product uh, that you uh, get in these kits, and then we'll go over the install steps and uh, take it from there and uh, give you some good information. So now we're going to talk about the components that come with an Easy Guide kit when you purchase one. Uh, just a little explanation, when you get the Easy Guide, there's two ways of getting it. Uh, a submeter antenna and an upgraded AG15 for higher accuracy. I'll explain both of those here in a little bit. But the basic pieces of the kit that come in the box, the Easy Guide 250 display with uh, buttons on both sides, your screen for viewing your coverage areas and other information as well as your LEDs across the top um, that tell you where you're going left or right on your guidance lines. On the back of the unit, power and input plugs here through a 12-pin Deutsch connector and uh, your coax cable for your receiver uh, It's on the roof that brings in the signal. Also have a USB for collecting uh, data and taking it to the office computer. And then here in the middle, you can see we've already mounted the inch and a half RAM ball mount that comes with the kit. Uh, the other part of the RAM mount consists of, I call it the wishbone, that clamps onto the flat ball part for the tractor side. For this installation that we're doing today, uh, I've adapted this a little bit because of the features that this tractor has. I'll show you that in a minute. Uh, we've replaced this. This has a uh, flexibility you can tap threads in here, you can use U-bolts, you can hard mount surface it on any kind of metal surface, so there's options with this kit. Um, kit also comes with a 12 volt power plug that's in the tractor already, and the patch antenna for the submeter kit. It's just a magnetic, goes on the roof, with, it comes with a magnetic plate if you don't have a metal roof, you can put this uh, on the magnetic plate looks something like this with sticky tape on it. So you mount that on the roof and this is where that uh, coax cable connects, right there with this connector. So I said it comes in two uh, options. The upgrade for this kit is an AG15 antenna. Uh, the small antenna that I just showed you is submeter, a couple feet, good for broadcast spreading. The AG15 will get you six to eight inch accuracy uh, for spraying, planting, uh, a little bit more tighter tolerance applications. So this takes place of the patch antenna. You get rid of this guy, keep it for a rainy day if you want, uh, but you get the patch antenna and you get a cable that's also in the cab here that I'll show you in a little bit that goes from the roof down to the Easy Guide connector that I mentioned before. So everything's in the box, ready to go. Uh, fairly simple installation that we're going to move to next and show you how it's done and uh, you can move it between tractors. That's how we're going to show you it being done today. We're not going to run the cables uh, underneath all kinds of covers and, and floor mats. We're going to keep it open so you can see how it is to get it from one tractor for one operation, then you move it to another tractor for another operation. So let's get to that now. All right, we're ready to go on the installation here. Um, I've got the mount already put on the bar. I've got the cables kind of dry fit in here. Um, so we're going to go ahead and get things started. What I like to do on these installations is get the cables connected on the back of the 250 ahead of time before putting it on the mount. It's just a whole lot easier than doing it after the fact. So there's reference notches on the Deutsch connector here. That's the one with the orange insert and it goes in the back here. So we're going to click that in spot. That's done. Then this is, uh, this is the upgrade one that I mentioned. So we've got our coax connector that we're going to connect here on the back of the 250. So we'll go ahead and put that on. This only needs to be thumb tight. Don't put a wrench on here. You'll just cause more damage and make this fail prematurely. So do make sure it gets threaded on the whole way so you have good contact, but just using your fingers will suffice. So we've got the ram ball mounted here on the bar. Um, with these U-bolts, you can see there's a little extra thread sticking out. I'd recommend cutting that off. 
because when we stick this bar on here, it can get in the way a little bit. Uh, here it seems to be fine, but many times it'll get in the way and you won't have the, the movement that you might want to get for flexing your screen around in different locations. So we're going to stick this on the display first, then on that bar there. We're going to tighten it up with the T-handle. You want to have it in a decent spot so while you're sitting in the seat, you can get good visual of the LEDs and you can see the screen and you can also reach the buttons. So we've got it pretty good here. Uh, next step would be to address the cables and get them routed along the edge and we'll probably go along the floor here and come up just like you see them here. So we'll move to that next. For the next step, we're going to route the cables up along this uh, right side. This cab door is not regularly used, kind of a tight spot. so we'll. Uh, move things along up through here, keep them out of the way. Again, this is a temporary install. If we were doing a permanent, we might consider taking the floor mat up and moving in under the plastic to get things permanently installed. But for now, we'll take the cables, pull the extra slack along here. We don't want things getting in the way of pedals or levers, but we'll get things moved along here so they're out of the way. So here we have the 12 volt cigarette plug. There is a fuse in here. This end twists off and there's a fuse in there. If you ever have power trouble with your 250, you can check that first and see if your fuse is blown. Uh, so here we have our 12 volt for this tractor. We're just going to plug it in. There's a green light on there. We know we have power, so we're good there. Get rid of some of that cable there. The antenna cable has a very large amount of cable with it just because it fits so many applications. So we're going to stuff it there by the seat out of the way of the hydraulic levers, get things taken care of. And then on this tractor, there's this nice cable access. So we're going to drop the antenna cable out through there, slide the cover back in. Again, this is just temporary. So see how that looks with the window closed. Yep, it's not pinching. You want to be careful on these cables not to pinch stuff. Uh, that's a coax cable with copper fibers in there. If you pinch it in doorways too tight without rubber gaskets, you can cause premature failure. So, all right, things look good there. Next, uh, we'll go up to the roof and show how to install the antenna. All right, so we're ready to mount the antenna. On this particular tractor, I'm not gonna be using the sticky plate. This is a new tractor that we don't want that thing on. So uh, we'll just simulate that we have a sticky plate here in the middle of the roof. And we've got our magnetic antenna. Before sticking the magnetic antenna down on the plate, you need to hook up the cable. Again, make sure this is tight, finger tight, no wrenches. We'll get it snug down. Put it in the middle of the roof. We don't want to be offset because that'll throw our pass to pass guidance off each time we're coming back and forth on the row. If you're off an inch, it'll be off an inch left or right depending which way you offset it on the roof. If you absolutely have to, you can adjust for that in the display, but if at all properly, the best way to do it is center the roof. So we look good there. Again, check your cable, make sure it's mounted. Use zip ties if you can, if you're not going to be moving it every day. And uh, just every once in a while, you can use zip ties to uh, attach it to different brackets on the roof and then work it down so it's not in the way of the window or other obstacles. Other than that, we'll go in the cab, make sure everything turns on and we've got our install complete. All right, we're back in the cab to make sure we have things connected correctly and we can see that we do. We've hit the top left button, the screens come on and we have it connected for power. And we know we have GPS signal because the satellite icon in the top left corner is green, which means we're fully connected. We can also check that here on the screen and see that we have eight satellites. So we are good to go. So that sums up a simple install of an Easy Guide 250. If you have any GPS or guidance needs, feel free to contact us at Messix at 1-800-222-3373. Thank you.